Welcome to Creative Pages with Catherine. I'm Catherine. It's time for part two of my Quilted Star two-page layout. Uh, when I got done filming the first two-page part where I just had the star kind of done in the four corners, the page really felt unfinished to me. I was a bit under the weather and it is what it is. I have since gone on vacation a little bit and I've come back and this was really bugging me. So we are gonna finish this up. We also had a bunch of scraps. So I actually have a second single page layout I'm gonna be doing in this video for you today. And then I'm also gonna be doing a couple of cards with some of these other scraps here because you know I like to use up those scraps. It's no fun having a whole lot of these laying around. And we also had these, this other piece here. I've cut out some mats, as you can see, from our page that had the camera on the back and then also from our blue diamond with the stripe on the back. I just thought that the diamonds really accentuated each other. This kind of the, the Square repeats the squares. Again, with the quilting, you kind of do have a lot of repetitive shapes a lot of the time, and I couldn't really figure out how to reincorporate some more of the star points. So, although we are going to here in our journal box down here, I haven't placed any of these pieces down. I just wanted to show you first what I was thinking about doing with this. Um, my mats, my larger mats, I kind of wanted to do for a four by six picture. So this is four and a half by six and a half. I wanted to just get that going. And then this one, we had had a little extra strip. So this is, hang on, let me find my measurements here using my zero centering ruler. This is about five and it's a little over five and a half. Let's say six eighths by four. And then this little box down here, I cut to fit and I wanted to mimic our same paper that we used on the background for our quilted star. And this one was four by three and three quarters because I thought it just fit the space very nicely here. I've also cut part of one of our um, index sheets and we are gonna cut this using our 12 inch trimmer, but I wanted to show you first. This little piece I actually made notes on, it's three and three quarters by three and a quarter. And then I've marked my center at one and five eighths because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut from the corner to the center to create another point going this way. And then that way when we journal, it'll be on something similar to what our quilted star is, just to kind of bring that back in a little bit. I mean, you can always just leave this in here as your journal box and use it as a square if you want or to repeat that way, but I just thought it'd be fun to add just that little extra flare. So let's get some of these mats down first. We're gonna be able to put a lot of photos on this page. Coming up. I was just super excited to be able to do a little bit more with it. Like I said, I don't know what I was thinking when I wasn't feeling well. I don't know if I actually was thinking. I don't know why I decided to film, but you know, I didn't want to get too far behind and I figured that way it, I'm not gonna put tape on those two corners. So that way when we go to put our picture, it'll be easier to get our picture under. Here we go. And then on this side, a little simpler now. I did put this one was cut just a little bit differently. So you can see the direction of our diamonds are running the same direction as these, whereas these are running horizontally. These are all running vertically. Even though this picture's going vertically, it just was how I cut the paper originally. And so if you want all your diamonds running 
horizontally, then think about that before you cut your paper. But since I really wanted to use up some scraps, I am okay. And once we have our picture on it, it'll be much less distinct and noticeable. Okay. That. Let me grab out my 12 inch trimmer and to cut our shape here you can see I am just going to line this up here, line this up here on this the left cutting track where my blade is. We can double check it using our cutting guide on our 12 inch trimmer, one of my favorite features of our trimmer. I think we used it quite a bit when we did these stars, so it just makes, it's, I don't know. It just was so well thought out when they designed the trimmer. I'm so glad somebody thought to do this because it does make it a lot easier to see, to know exactly where our blades are gonna cut. There we go. Okay. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and place this in here like this. And if you want, we can even, hang on, let me see what I have in my scraps that might actually accentuate this a little and fill in our space. Hmm, that's not quite gonna fit, but this would. Maybe. How about, nope, that's the same pattern. So it disappears a bit, maybe this one. So there we go. So this kind of will accentuate and bring back in our quilted star a little bit more. Just trying to use up a couple more scraps. I thought it looked a little blank when I first put that down. Yep, you can see where this, oh here, actually that might be even better. Uh, no, actually I like the other color because we mixed so many colors on our star. So let's do that. Okay, here we go. Setting these aside again. And I'm going to grab my repositionable tape and my parchment board. If you haven't seen my parchment board before, it's a sturdy piece of cardboard with parchment paper wrapped on it, held on with electrical tape. Electrical tape is one of the few things that will stick to parchment, and since we're not cooking with it, it really doesn't matter. So when you use the repositionable tape on the parchment, it doesn't stick. Basically, the little dots that don't come out stay in the tape runner, and your board stays smooth. You're not getting sticky everywhere. kind of keeps things a little bit neater and cleaner. Here we go. And now we'll get these placed. And I suppose we could have stuck these coming out from this way, maybe. Hmm. To add our journaling, but I think that might be too distracting. We want people to actually look more at our pictures and look at our journaling and not be distracted by the design that we're putting on the page. So I think that'll work. And then that way you can just write across and it'll work out great. I'm gonna add a couple of stickers as well. I pulled out my R Moment stickers and I love this lightly colored one. It's gonna kinda just be on the page but not be super noticeable because we do want the, the pattern or what we've done in our design to be more noticeable. I am going to actually grab this other sheet of foam squares because I want to cut one in a couple in half. Here we go using my micro tip scissors which have the special coating on them so it works out great to 
just cut your foam squares in half because the sticker is a little bit thinner, but I still want to pop it up. Put it across so I can get this unstuck from my finger. There we go. Okay, so here is our So Many Memories, kind of pointing to our different pictures. And I kind of was liking this little almost black and white branch because it repeats this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here and grab this other one to put up on this other side. And then that way, we kind of have embellished sort of in a triangular pattern this time. We can kind of follow through. Your eye is pleasing. And I think that's going to be it for these two pages. I feel so much better about it. And you can see our little So Many Memories has popped up with our quilted stars in the corners. And when you're doing it, you could have easily turned it before you put on your other stickers, although I guess it really doesn't matter. We could do everything going this direction because we have our thing here, or you could easily put these together like this on your page. How whatever you like best is what you should go with. And that is it for our quilted star page. I have grabbed out also, hang on, let me move my board here. I grabbed, grabbed my zero centering ruler just in case I needed it again. In some of our scraps I found, I still had quite a bit of the camera paper, uh, which, which has this, the peachy, almost diamond look that we had on the other side of the page. And then we had left over from cutting circles from another project, this little row of circles. And I just liked the idea of putting this at the top of the page here. Thinking I might even run this down the side and make it almost like a, I don't know, it almost has a concrete look to it, doesn't it? But I want to cut two mats out of our camera paper and I may repeat this over here, but I knew I wanted to put the leftover part of our circles across the top of the page for sure, because I already have a couple of stickers picked out that I want to place up in the top here. So we'll have our stickers kind of running across the top. We'll have our photos here. We'll use up some scraps. It'll be great. You know, I love to use up the scraps. And hopefully this gives you some ideas of some unique ways you can and not be like, oh, I cut a bunch of circles. I can't use this now. I don't know what to do with it. This is going to give you an idea of what to do with it. So I'm using my repositionable tape again. Oops, trying to get through the centers here. I think I got them all. There we go. This is gonna go across the top. And there. And now I need to measure here real quick. Let's see what we have. And we know that it's six inches to the zero. So seven, eight, nine and almost a half. That actually looks closer to three eighths. So between nine and a quarter and nine and a half here. Let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, and what did I say? Nine and three eighths, okay. 
So let's get that. That's one of our more unusual measurements, but I really liked the idea of also using up this piece. So why not? Let's use it. So nine and three eighths. So one, two, three. So that's gonna fall just before our quarter, between the quarter and the half. Here we go. And actually that worked out for me because I had a little nick in my paper too up here. And over here I must have had an issue with my one of my cutters. And that's okay, you know, it happens. So I said it's paper, it's okay to have a couple scraps from time to time that you can't reuse, but it's nice to be able to reuse what we can. Okay, so that was just a tad short, but you know what? We're gonna go with it. Not gonna worry about it. I'll go ahead and get this placed down and then we're gonna grab our trimmers again and cut some mats. You can tell this one kind of wasn't based on any set plan. Oops. Grab my multi-purpose tool and get this really straightened out here along this line here and following the edge of the paper as well. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over. We must have been just a little bit crooked and that happens, you know. Like I said, sometimes with paper it's not perfect and we aren't perfect either, so it's okay. Now, let's cut a couple mats and then I also do have this extra scrap out here just in case it works over here maybe. I kind of thought even about centering it on here, but I just kind of like the almost the absence of color on this page because then your photos are really going to pop out. So this I believe, yes, five and a half is what the width of what we had left on our paper is. So five and a half, so if we're doing four by six photos, let's go to four because then you're gonna take a half inch off both ends of your photo. So we'll do a couple of these. Here we go. Oh, we got this extra piece now too. Hmm. All right, let's see here. Which one do I like better? But first let's get our, our mats. And actually I'm going to place them really straight. I thought originally I would do something fun and whimsical, kind of like what I usually do. I usually do more color, but I almost like the idea of doing this more just straight. And this actually could work for a journal box with this larger one. I don't think this is gonna work out for us. We might see this on a card later. Set that aside with the scraps and let's go ahead and get these placed. Get rid of that. Here we go. kind of trying to do it so where it looks almost like it's in a cross in a row. stickers that says you and me on it and it's it's again it's repeating this whole neutral theme and that's what I'm gonna put in this top here is the you and me in the center I am gonna grab a couple of foam squares to pop this up I'm gonna use a couple of the small ones if I can get it unstuck from my finger as usual goodness gracious there we go Okay. 
Okay, so our you and me is going in the center circle. And we also have a couple of really neutral little flies, I guess is what these are. Here, I'll hold it closer. It's a little bug. Try to get it so you can see it on the camera a little bit better. It's hard to see. But I wanted to kind of just anchor with the flies going towards the outside. And then I'm going to put a couple of these little leaves also. There is a, a camera and it says recorded if you want to use that instead because we used the photo paper. But I just really liked the idea of the absence of color in this almost gray tone paper. So I'm gonna put this one heading that way and this other one heading this other direction. Just kind of repeating and creating a really just lovely effect on the page. And I'll hold that closer for you so you can see I put the stickers at the top here in our what could have been a scrap to somebody else or a wasted piece that got tossed. We were able to use it on our page and we created a really pretty page out of it. So your pictures and then you can also grab that index sheet we had before. You can cut a little strip in here to do your journaling or you can do some journaling down here if you want. And there you go. Just a simple, pretty page using some of the scraps that we had left over from our Quilted Star and the R Moments collection from our other page that we did from our projects we've had. So that's it for this time. You know there'll be more scrap videos coming and like I said, I'm, I think I am gonna have a couple of cards until next time.